And so the book really asks, you know, if we fast forward Aotearoa 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, what do we want our economy to look like, our society to look like with all this technology change happening? So I'm going to just finish up with my thoughts on what does this mean, in particular, putting a lens on this ambition to double exports in 10 years. So that's a really ambitious goal. And in the book, I talk about this global poly crisis of climate change, biodiversity collapse, and geopolitical change that's happening, which will be headwinds to that goal of doubling export value. But if we did do it, what would it look like for our products? So that's a breakdown of New Zealand's export um, products uh, in 2021 from the organized, the Observatory of Economic Complexity, right? So what is going to be in that blue space? Is it going to be more primary products or are we going to start filling it with, with some new different products, maybe or technologies that we want to export? Similarly for services, are we going to continue to basically fill that blue space with more tourism and that would re require more flights, more carbon emissions uh, to and from our remote country? So I take inspiration from David Skilling, his economist, and he wrote this paper at the end of 2022 for the now defunct Productivity Commission about supply chains to the last bus stop on the planet. And his guidance here is that we really need to think about the bulk and the weight given fragility of supply chains for physical products. How do we reduce towards weightless, certainly compressing the amount of weight and the amount of space that our products take up? And just as an illustration here, so I asked ChatGPT, how much would a shipping container of milk powder be worth? And so I haven't checked the numbers here, but it came up with about 100,000 US dollars based on current prices. Um, if you went and took the NVIDIA uh, DGX H100, which is sort of pretty much their flagship product, then we're talking $51 million of those with packaging. And so there's 500X value per meter cubed between those two different uh, products. So why are we not exporting NVIDIA DGX H100s? Why is that from Taiwan and the US? And I think my hypothesis here is that future economic value, how we double those exports is down to the knowledge intensity and the product complexity. So how much information is involved in actually manufacturing a product? And so my question is, how? where do we want to play? Do we want to keep playing down at this layer where we turn grass and cows into milk and fish into fish meat? Or do we want to make the machines that make the machines or the machines that make the machines that make the machines? And so these autonomous, autonomous tractors is sort of in this layer. Or are we going to go further and start you know, building the software and the 3D printing realization that makes the, the machines that make the machines that make the machines or right at the very top level, are we just going to go straight for nanotech? So I think strategically as a country, we've got to ask this question, what do we want to be exporting in 15 years time that will make up that the blue difference? From a point of view in the book, the, our, our businesses and our country needs to have a technology strategy which is able to keep up with the frontier of what's happening um, at a global level. And these are my thoughts towards that. And you can find out more in the book. That's me. So Nami, he, 